Hello, welcome again, brethren, uh, for this opportunity God has given us again to come together to share His uh, wonderful, powerful Word, the Word that giveth life, the Word that is the foundation of uh, heaven and earth creation, and the Word that frames the entire earthly world and its habitants. So today we're going to look at again the book of uh, Malachi. You know the title is Understanding the Book of Malachi, which is the last book of the Old Testament. And that last book of the Old Testament was uh, uh, written by Malachi. And we know also that uh, Malachi was the prophet who was born in diaspora and moved from Babylon to Jerusalem for a specific purpose. Last week, if you can remember what I said to you about the book of Malachi, but before we go on, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord. We bless you for your people who have come together in this hour to hear from your throne. Lord, release a word of Rema that whoever is listening to this message, this uh, a Bible study today, receive a word that will transform and renew them in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that as the word is being released and is entering the heart of man, let light shine, let understanding take place. The impartation of your knowledge enrich them in the name of Jesus. We pray always, Lord, that whoever is sick at this hour, let them receive healing as they hear this word. Every confused mind become unconfused and release, delivered in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power love and sound mind. Take all the glory. Holy Spirit be in charge. Teach us, for you are the teacher by excellence. We give you all the glory and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. So I was saying to you, brethren, that uh, last week we look at the book of uh, Malachi. We uh, talked about uh, the the very meaning of the name of uh, Malachi, which means my messenger. And as I said to you, Malachi uh, was or uh, uh, started his ministry almost 435 years to 396 before Christ. So I shared with you that uh, Malachi was to be compared to Moses because Moses gave us the first book of the Old Testament and talk about the coming or concerning the Messiah. So Malachi comes to give us the last book of the Old Testament, but bring the same message Moses brought concerning the Messiah. And also, I talked to you about that Malachi was not only the prophet or the messenger of God, but he was also a reformer. He came to bring some changes which was within the cultural system or the structure of Israel. Remember, I said to you, it can be also compared to uh, uh, Martin Luther, uh, the reformer of the Catholic Church, who talked about the one spirit, one faith, and uh, and one word, which is the, uh, the word of God. And the same Malachi, being the reformer, was also compared to John the Baptist because he came to pave the way at the last book of the Old Testament 
for the coming of the Messiah. And as soon as John the Baptist in the New Testament started to pave the way, he warned people and called to them to repent because of the coming of the kingdom of God. And that's where we all understand the coming of the Messiah, which Moses talked since the first book of the Old Testament and Malachi talked about at the last book of the Old Testament. It's that wonderful that these people never met, but the talking about the same topic is to show you how God work in the midst of his servant and for them that love him. So we also talked about uh, last week in understanding the book of uh, Malachi, we must also look at what are the things God wants him to reform. Because the first thing was to look at the sins of the priesthood or the sins of the servant of God, how sin kept them away from the presence of God, how they became a lax. Remember when I talked to you, I did talk to you about the social laxity where people lost the sense of care and lost the sense of strictness in divine principles. Praise the name of the Lord. And after the sins of the priests, or this, the, 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 the warning to the priesthood, he moved on to talk about the sins of the people. And I remember uh, one of the things I focused on was that people, began to do what we call spiritless routine worship. So people worship, there's no involvement of the spirit. Remember the Bible tells us in the book of John that God is looking for worshipers, those worshiping in truth and in the spirit. So when we do not use the Spirit of God in worship, it is a waste of time. And Malachi comes with that in mind to say the way we are worshiping is wrong. And then he moves on to talk about the evil association of the people. Remember the Bible tells us, do not join the crowd to do evil. It's not that we had started today, but all along, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in man's suit, these things were already happening. And then he says that evil association were destroying the very nature of our God. And God was displeased by our behavior. And then he moved to the next one and said, people were questioning the justice of God. Do not question God. How could the, the clay be keen to question the potter? Isn't that a freak of nature? If a man begins to question God, then something is wrong. Because man created, God created a man in his own image. He breathed into man and man became a living being. So man is supposed to live according to God's plan. Obviously, God gave us, you may say, Brother Victor, what about the free will God gave us? Oh, yes. The free will God gave us we still have to use it wisely and we still need that revelatory word and the revelatory knowledge through divine guidance to be able to talk to God. We cannot question the justice of God. As I've always said, gee, God hasn't got a father, God hasn't got a mother, God hasn't got an advisor, God is self-sufficient. That's why we call him the omnipresent, the omnipotent, and the omniscience, all-knowing all. 
Now, today I want to uh, 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 look at the last uh, 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 bit of it, which is the coming day of the Lord. Because remember, I said to you, Malachi came and be began to talk about the, the Messiah coming. The Messiah was in his way, though it was the last book of the Old Testament. The reformer, he told the people, but he also corrected them. He rebuked them. And that is what the servant of God has to do. Although he's a, 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 a gently encouraging, teaching the word of God, and leading people in the path of righteousness, but he has to be able also to rebuke whenever necessary or whenever necessary. So today we're going to look at the last uh, 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 area of the book of Malachi, which is the uh, coming day of the Lord. But before I talk about that, it's important that I remind you the third chapter of the book of Malachi, verse 10 to 12, which is important as a believer, we have to live according to God financial and economic system in them. Because when we live according to uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to uh, 12, where he talks about to bring all the tithe in the storehouse, because that's the system God has made in his kingdom for people to operate in the economical financial system. And the good thing, the revelation I receive is that when you tithe, when you bring offering into the storehouse, you promote the kingdom of God, you will operate under open heaven. Heaven will never forget you. Heaven will always be open for you because of your obedience as far as finances are concerned, as far as economic system are concerned, as far as exchange as concerned, and the way you're promoting the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 4 and let's look at uh, the first verse. The first verse, oh yes, let me, let me also bring another thing uh, before I move there. Still in that uh, chapter of Malachi chapter 3, one of other scenes that the people were doing, apart from the inequalities, uh, apart from the uh, uh, marriages in uh, 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 nations or with uh, eaten nations or Gentile nations, people began to bring what we call sexual immorality. Morality was no longer with the people. Doing wrong became a path everyone took. They were no longer shame and they were no longer remorse of offending or being in breach of the word of God. And after immorality, there was also the insincerity. Honesty was not, we're no longer there. People didn't bother to have integrity which is very dangerous in the body of Christ that the people live with insincerity. It's important, my brethren, that you have to be honest with yourself. Because if you are not honest with yourself, you'll never be honest with anybody and you live a life whereby somebody else will take control over your day-to-day -day living. Because you'll be in breach of the law of the land, and when you fail to take responsibility, then the law will take responsibility of it. And the next scene that was found in the people was indebtedness. People were living in debt so much. They would borrow living beyond their means. They could not live according to uh, their ability. And, and that's where people come and say, where have we robbed God? So if you look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 3, verse 8, sorry, verse 8 to verse 10, 
people are questioning how can we rob God? But when we are taking the first tenth of our revenue, the first tenth of our produce or our harvest and using it to do our own things, we are now living a life of robbers. We are buying things with the money we're not supposed to possess. And that caused a lot of debt in us. And the last one was the incriminations. So if you look at from verse 15, people live a life of proud and wickedness and they tempted God and they try also to do things that will question our relationship with God. So these are the things uh, which men uh, in the book of Malachi, uh, when they talk about the sins of the people, this element I've just quoted to you, the inequalities, the intermarriages, uh, immorality, insincerity, and indebtedness and incrimination were the sins of the people. Now, let's go back to what I said, the book of Malachi chapter four, uh, from verse one, let it read it aloud together. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Hmm. The heat inside the oven, no man is able to put their hand in. And the Bible, Malachi is telling us that there is, for the day comes that shall burn like an oven. And all the proud and arrogant, yes, all that do wickedly and are lawless shall be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up. We all know that uh, uh, Pride precede uh, destruction or pride precede uh, dishonor. God is saying to you and me, as you're watching me right live now, that if you are proud, you are arrogant, you are wicked, move away from these things, repent, and begin to walk with God. Because the penalty of this will be that you will find in a situation where it's compared like the burn in the oven. I'm sure if you have an oven in your house, you must understand the degree of a heat in the oven. And imagine you going to find yourself in that position or in that condition. It is regrettable. But bless you who has ears, and he who has ears, let him hear. What basically is saying that if you understand by hearing, you understand, but practice what you understand. And it goes further, says, says the Lord of the hosts that it will leave them neither root nor branches. I mean that when that fire comes, there will, there will be nothing remaining. Everything will be consumed. You know that our God is a consuming fire. Remember Elijah with the prophet of Baal? When he called upon God, God descended with the fire, consumed everything. Even the stones were consumed. So watch out. Do not be distracted. God created you in his image. And he wants you to worship him and he wants you to remain in relationship with him. As I've always said to you, you and I need God to be who we are. But God does not need us to be God. Because before we were created, he was God. And he's still God. And he will still remain God after we've left this earth. Praise the name of the Lord. And look at verse 2. It says, but unto you that fear my name, and to you that who revere and worshipfully fear my name 
Shall the son of righteousness arise with eating in his wings and his beams, and you shall go forth and gamble like calves released from the stable and leap for joy. This is basically, I don't know if you've ever had time to go to a, a farm and you see how uh, the, the calf, the young calf has been uh, uh, released to come in, uh, in the space. The way the calf will jump, the way the calf will demonstrate the joy, that's what God is saying. That if we reverently and worshipfully fear his name, we will have that joy of the young calves who's been released in the stall, from the stall and leap for joy. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for there shall be ashes under the sole of your feet in the day that I shall do this, said the Lord of hosts. Interesting. I, I like that when the Bible says that the enemy, Satan and his agent are under my feet. And I believe strongly that they are under my feet because I have nothing to envy from them and I have nothing to take as a lesson from, the, from them because I am in charge. I represent God on the planet Earth. I am his ambassador. I am his representative. So anyone who has not been appointed by God on earth is illegal and they have no power to operate. That's why you are we hurry to cast out the spirit. This is the authority that has been rested upon us. And verse Paul says, remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Oreb for all Israel with the statute and judgment. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the law. And ye shall burn, ye shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to the fathers lest I come and smart thee with a curse. Remember what, one of the things we, looked, we, looked, we talked about last week? That the book of the Old Testament ended with a curse message. But the book of the New Testament in Revelation ended with blessing. So that's the, the, quite the dynamic, the difference between these two books, the way they ending their message to mankind. Now, let, 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 let's look exactly what it means all of that uh, 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 read to you. The purpose of the coming of Christ is, first of all, for the Gentile, and secondly, for the Jewish, and those who will accept Christ, as Lord and Savior, those who will gather will be gathered by Christ, those who will be purified by Christ, and those who will be healed by Christ. Listen what God is saying here. Why does God permit such thing? This attitude of the people was probably due to the feeling that the glowing promises of Haggai and Zechariah and of the other prophet had not been realized. Imagine Agai talked about people, sinful behavior, how they neglected to build the temple of the Lord. Zechariah comes with the message of national repentance and the judgment of the Lord. People still ignore. Malachi also come with the reformation, but things still not done the way God wanted because people were completely educated with the Babylonian system or the worldly system where sin became normal. So now he has to do this job. 
It goes then, they say that Jehovah did not seem to distinguish between good and bad men. So we, we, we see that in uh, uh, Malachi 2.17, which says, Ye have wearied the Lord with your word, yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, Everyone that does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and, the, and he delighted in them. Or where is the God of judgment? It happened in our society these days. People doing evil, they're being seen as good people. Even when they have done wrong, there's no remorse, there's no morality. Even people have stolen public fund. They have rape, they have misused the public asset, they have no remorse. The conscience has been removed. I'm sure you, you, you must be familiar when they say conscience without knowledge is a ring. And, and that's the, the difficulty we have to this day. So he blesses all alike, and even men of the large have experience at the expense of their fellows. What is the use of being good? Is this one is, is this not one of the standing complaint of those who think they are good men? They say, What is good? What is God doing? that he permits a thing. The answer to such a complaint is that Jehovah does care. God cares for you. He is long suffering. He is not pleased when you and I commit sin. But he gives us the opportunity to repent. He gives us the opportunity to change and get back to his way of living and his way of walking how we conduct ourselves, because he's a merciful God. He's a long-suffering God. It grieved him when you and I, we live a sinful life. When you and I, we abandon the ways he has shown us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. The answer to such a complaint is that Jehovah does care. He showed this to them by saying that one day, he will send his messenger. And we're going to see that in the, in the, the first book of uh, Matthew, the first gospel, which is the gospel of Matthew, where God is now sending John the Baptist after Malachi to prepare the way. Then he will come in person suddenly and sit in judgment and separate the evil from the good. His judgment will be sending, will be searching and effective like a refiner's fire. Like full as a soul. When God really gets ready to act, what will he do? The action will be final. When the burden of God's message by Malachi to his people stated in the second verse of the book, I have loved you, said the Lord, what a message to a people who had seen as Israel had and had spurned, had spurned the love of Jehovah God. God is always sending his messengers before him to prepare his way. God never got tired. Look, God has been sending his prophet, his servant. Remember, he sent Jonah to Nineveh. God never got tired. He sent all these prophets with the message, stay away from sin. Do not sin because sin makes you coward. Sin makes, makes you miss the mark of God. Sin keeps you away from God. Sin is a blessing blocker. So it's quite paramount and vital that you and I live a life where sin 
is not part of it. And as we do so, with a long life, we will be satisfied. Let's come back here to a, 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 a teaching in the coming of the, the, the Lord. He said, he wants all his children to honor and adore him. Remember, as I said to you, you could see that also in uh, Isaiah 43 verse 9, when he said, all that are called by my name, to worship me who are formed by my hand, to worship me. He longs to have us obey and worship him. But who can stand the day of his appearance and who can enjoy his purifying fire? Who can enjoy the fire of God? I can't. Because the fire of God is a consuming fire. There's no any other fire that can resist or stand before the fire of God. Of course, we have the example where God demonstrated that his fire is greater than the fire from Nebuchadnezzar. Remember when Nebuchadnezzar took the three uh, uh, brothers and they put them in the fiery furnace? God has to go there with his fire to drain them and consume the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. But the part I like is interesting. He saw something which no man could explain. And he has to go back and say, maybe I'm not seeing properly. Let me check with my people and say, didn't we put three people here? Or you say, yes, my Lord, you put three people. Oh, yes, king. He said, but I'm seeing, instead of seeing three, I'm seeing four. And the fourth one is like the son of man. That's Jesus who always come to our rescue. Jesus who want to share that pain with you and deliver you from it. And when they couldn't, what is interesting, brethren, is that they only took out Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but they left Jesus inside the fiery furnace. And why Jesus stayed there? He stayed there because he knows that one of us again will go there. And he doesn't want any of us to face that saying, I must stay here. Whoever comes who have accepted me, as Lord and Savior, will not be consumed by the fire of Nebuchadnezzar because my fire will consume the fire of Nebuchadnezzar. Interesting. What a revelation. So it's important that we understand that God wants his children to honor him, to adore him. He wants his children to have, to worship him. But who can stand the day of his appearing? That's a good question. If the Lord came here today, Will you stand? That's why the question is being asked. Who will stand the day of his appearing? And who can endure is a purifying fire. God's messenger will be a witness revealing our cruelty, our lies, our injustices, our double dealings. This can be said of us today just as much as the Jewish of old. Jehovah's representative comes and find us robbing him of his due. Remember that what I was saying to you in uh, Malachi chapter 3 where people will be wondering, said, how can we steal from God? How can we rob God? Because God is saying that we have been living a life of cruelty. We have been living a life of lies. We have been living a life of injustices. We have been living a life of double dealing. Brethren, we have to stay away for all these form of conduct in life. Lies are something we have to stay away from it because lies and robbery are from the same package. If you lie, lie a lot, you steal. Even when they say you have stolen, you still argue because conscience gone. No morality. We have to prepare ourselves for the coming day of the Lord. And when we prepare ourselves for the coming day of the Lord, the big question we should ask ourselves, we last stand on the appearing of the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So yet Jehovah, God is unchanging, or they call him the unchanging changer. You can change. I can change, 
but our God is unchanging changer. He never forget is the promises of undying love and everlasting mercy. Which is it's interesting. How many times we fail in our duties? How many times we miss the mark? How many times we wrong one another? How many times we fail to be guardian of our brothers? How many times you and I are double-minded, double-faced, but God still loves us. His everlasting mercies are renewed every morning. And interestingly, his love never die because he loved you before the foundation of the world. And he always look at the, the work that was accomplished on the cross of Calvary for you and I. We shouldn't be taking that for granted, but we should be more grateful and stand on us feet, live the life God expected us to live. And how we need God's Malachi today to be sent before him to prepare his way so that God's people may honor and adore him. Malachi cries, back to God's house, back to God's word, back to God's work, back to God's grace. Interesting. And that's what we do today. We are appealing unto you back to God's house. Those who have gone scattered, those who have missed, those who have run away from the house of God, come back. God is telling you, come back, John. Come back, Peter. Come back, Kenny. Come back, Fred. Come back, Mark. Come back, Fortune. Come back, James. He's calling you back. Come back, Princess. Come back, Toby. Tony, come back. Shano, come back. Sam, come back. Patrick, come back in the house of God. Shansi, come back in the house of God. Gide, come back in the house of God. Anyone who has gone astray, God is calling you back in the house because that's where you belong. Back to his word. Back to his work and back to his grace. Each one may be like Malachi, a herald of the Christ who's coming we now await. Be a Malachi to tell people back in the house, back in God's word, back in God's work, back in God's mercy, and back in God's grace. Glory be to God. We do not deserve it, but God has made it available for us. Think of the need of this day, the need of the church, the need of the world, is not formalism, a just charge today against our churches. An outward observance without a wholehearted love. Are we not to offering gift that costs nothing? Remember, I was talking to you about the God system, financial, economical system of his kingdom. One of the things, if you could look at Malachi, was talking to the people. They say, one of your sins is that you give God an offering that is not worthy. And the same thing here, Malachi is reminding us that when we give him, we should not give unworthily or something that does not cost you. If you can remember what Jesus Christ fulfilled on the cross for you, how he died for you, how he died for me, how he went through pain, he went in hell, made a show, defeating the principalities and powers. That job he did. And he came out and said, it is accomplished, it is finished. We cannot lose sight of that and present ourselves before God with the thing that does not challenge us. When you give, give that costs you. Are we not robbing God in this matter of tithe? Amid all the hypocrisy of the day, there were those in the Jewish community who will fear God and remain, unfaithful, remain faithful. If we turn to Malachi 3.16, we'll find this Malachi long to develop a strong body of enthusiasm enthusiastic believers 
who could influence his people's future. It is interesting to note that God Ben is here to hear his people speak about him. In closing this book, by reading about Malachi's solemn declaration concerning the second coming of Christ, for which we waited, he's saying that if we align ourselves with that on that very day, the Son of Righteousness will come with healing on his wings. And he, he, he's saying quite interestingly here, he's saying that on that day, the Son of Righteousness arrived with healing in his wings, and he shall go forth, grow up as calf of the stone. I mean, I've told you that if you've ever been in the farm and you've released a, a young calf, you should see how they jump, they leap, turn around, enjoy themselves. They feel that joy, and that's the joy God is talking about. If you and I make a decision to live a sin, sinless life, a life whereby we are no longer conscious of sin, but we are more conscious of our right standing with him. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that whoever is hearing this message, wherever they are, Lord, let this message challenge them that they will make a decision from this day forward to live a life of righteousness. They will become unconscious of sins. They will not have the test of sins. They will be more preoccupied to stand right with you and fulfill your commandment. Your statute will never depart from them and your word will remain in their lips and in their hearts. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, because you are helping each and every one of us who right now is listening to this word that will transform us, you will equip us, and we will be as you declare and define us in Isaiah 43, verse 9, that those who are made by your hand will worship you and will do your will. And we thank you, Father, in this very hour. Take all the glory and all the honor. Forget not your people, but Lord, always through your love, grace, and mercy, receive us and lead us into your righteousness. Take all the glory, Father, and all the honor that in this season, in this hour of COVID-19 pandemic, your people will not lose faith. They will walk by faith that their pestilence will not come near their home and all of us will benefit the covering of your feathers for you are the refuge, you are shield and a buckler. Take all the glory and all the honor in Jesus name. Amen, 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 amen. Brethren, I'll see you again uh, Sunday, uh, 10.30. Please join us uh, uh, on Sunday, 10.30 for our Sunday service. And also, more importantly, look at uh, the material in the, in the Facebook account. Uh, we would appreciate your uh, giving, your donation to keep us going, to keep us uh, 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 moving in the... In the expanding and evangelizing the word of God and any gift will be welcome. You have our account on the, on, the, on the system. So please access it and give as the spirit of the Lord leads you. We thank you. We bless you. Remember your destiny is in the hand of the Lord for this is our year of supernatural favor, supernatural breakthroughs and supernatural increase in Jesus name. Amen.